drivers that are stuck in traffic but will be here in a few minutes. Uh, we have some substitutions. Do I have a motion? All right, we have a first by Mr. Lawrence, second by Mr. Gines. All in favor? Hello. Six to one. Paul against. All right. To our policy agenda, we're adding item 4B, ordinance to amend the LDO to allow consideration of short-term rentals within A, agricultural and LB limited business zoning. To our consent agenda, we're adding, uh, excuse me, 5QQ, resolution to request Harrison County assistance to make emergency repairs to the intersection of Brazier Road and Champaign Road. All right, do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Six or five to one, I'm sorry. Kenny's out the room. All right, we'll start with our presentation agenda. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I want to begin my report by noting the passing of a friend of mine and a friend of Biloxi, Emil Fallo, uh, passed away last night. And, uh, uh, you know, I think when his uncle, uh, uh, Dominic, was a finance commissioner, but Emil was a just a tremendous friend of Biloxi and one of the pioneers of uh, some of the gaming uh, benefits that we have here in the city of Biloxi. He was, you know, early on in the 60s and 70s, legalized gambling is what I'm talking about now. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, Emil served for just a number of years as Biloxi's commissioner to the airport authority. And uh, there's a lot of those activities that we've been, uh, you know, trying to get after a, a number of years, Emil had his hand in it. So. Uh, he was a, a graduate of Notre Dame. I believe he was 87. Uh, so I just would ask to, to be remembered today at the end of council, Emil, you know, his, his thoughts and prayers were with his family and friends. And uh, Emil worked with a, a lot of ways. And he was actually, when we first purchased our, uh, he, he, he had the first uh, service bureau of data processing, data entry, and, and processing of statements. It was actually in, in our parking lot right behind us right now and uh, Coast Data Processing, I believe. And uh, so uh, Emil was a tremendous friend, and I think uh, we, were, we were in sync on where we were going with things and technology, so I do uh, offer my condolences and prayers and thoughts to uh, Emil's family. So with that in mind, you'll see a few things on in front of you that Sark is, but we have some guests from Extra Table. I'm gonna ask Rhonda and uh, Martha Allen to come give us a little report. You'll notice a couple of things that it's, uh, that's tuna. We, uh, Martha will tell you a little bit. We asked about shrimp, canned shrimp, but I think we had uh, some donations uh, from uh, one of our uh, sea seafood processors that uh, actually handled the, the shrimp part of this. But Extra Table is trying to do, uh, raise some, some food products uh, to help fill in the gap that we've uh, all uh, been challenged with as far as uh, hunger. So with that in mind from Extra Table, Martha and Rhonda, please come up. Good afternoon, my name is Martha Allen and I'm the Executive Director of Extra Table. And this is my coworker, Rhonda Hayden. She just joined the team in June, so we're a team of two now, so we're really excited to be providing food um, to Loaves and Fishes, your local food pantry, every month throughout the year and have been for many years. Um, for those of you that are unaware what Extra Table is, we're the nonprofit started by Chef Robert St. John in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And we started with a mission to fundraise in order to purchase new, healthy, and shelf-stable food. We know that we live in one of the poorest and hungriest states, and so how do we combat that? Well, Extra Table does that by fundraising with partners just like you, and we deliver the food right to the doorstep of Loaves and Fishes every month. And as the good mayor just said, we've just load, unloaded a lot of shrimp supporting your local economy. We bought $54,000 worth of shrimp through a grant from local shrimpers right here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. We had it processed right here in Biloxi, and we distributed it to um, three big food hubs throughout the state. And that was so exciting to get y'all's grand protein out to those people 
throughout our state that might not have access to that at a time when food costs are up, protein costs are more, to be able to provide them the sparkly shrimp that many people have only seen. It's so familiar and common for y'all, but that many people have only seen on the TV sizzling. So that was a, a great thing. We dropped 44,000 pounds of sweet potatoes recently as well, but we're constantly cleaning out the casinos as they closed and getting that food into the hands of those here on the coast and most especially here in Biloxi. So um, in these lovely COVID times that are still 2020, 21, um, how do we fundraise? How do we get groups to gather? How do we continue to tell you about the amazing work that we do at Extra Table and gain your support and the support of your constituents and the community here? And um, we kind of came up with a fun idea in order to get everybody involved and involved in safe ways and um, just to continue our mission of supplying healthy shelf-stable food to food pantries and soup kitchens across the coast. And we have seven coastal partners that are on um, the poster that are laid at your tables. And uh, surpri no surprise at all, we now have 10 mayors that have agreed to partner with Extra Table across the coast. Y'all have uh, an incredible resilience and an incredible energy down here. And um, even though your Mardi Gras didn't happen as it normally does this year, you're not without celebration. We have come up with a really exciting inaugural event and hope that it will go off without a hitch this year. We know it will after this tuna challenge. and. Um, we know that in future years, this will be something easy and helpful where we can all make a difference to feed our hungry neighbors here. So I'm going to let Rhonda give you the details on the March of the Mayors. So we have been fortunate enough to partner with 10 different mayors throughout the Gulf Coast, and each mayor is committing to collecting one food item, a Pacific food item. So y'all have been selected to do a protein, tuna, canned tuna. The reason why we want each city to do one item is so we can ensure that when all of the cities come together, we have enough tuna fish, enough peanut butter, um, canned fruit, what those items are to fill individual boxes that will go to each of the food pantries. So with there being 10 cities participating, there will be 10 food pantries that will receive the food that's packed and we will divide it evenly between those um, 10, 10 food pantries. So each one will get 10% of what is boxed that day. Exactly, so we're all about the efficiency and effectiveness of getting food to our pantry. So we have a board member that owns a cardboard and box manufacturing company and they manufactured 16,713 of the most beautiful boxes you've ever seen. They are truly a gift in themselves and to be full of food is gonna be incredible. They say this box feeds people and it talks about extra table and our mission statement on the outside and you open it up and it's white cardboard and it's meant for children to color and for families to talk about packing this box and learning about healthy eating and hunger in Mississippi. So um, you can see the 10 cities and wherever all of you guests are from, please support your city and your mayor and especially um, Biloxi here with our tuna today and let us know how we can be of further assistance to the city of Biloxi and loaves and fishes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any questions? Martha, Rhonda, we appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. And um, again, you see that little tuna, what the challenge is, now Serena and I will take the winner, you know, the win, losing, win, place, and draw or, or show, uh, whoever raises the, you know, on behalf of your ward, whoever raises the most, We'll take you out to dinner, you and your significant other. So that's the challenge from me to our council that uh, I think we have boxes at every uh, fire station and uh, City Hall and Snyder Center. Am I forgetting anything else? So just write your ward number. We'll tell your people to when you drop off the tune, write your ward number. We're going to count them up and be my guests, me and Serena's guests for dinner when it all uh, clears up. I'll do the counting, so you know it'll be a fair shake. No, it'll be drop them off at the, uh, <laughs> just write your ward number down on top of it. Or, no, on the I'm asking, uh, is the most tuna you can eat or we have to turn the cans in? No, <laughs> it had nothing to do with eating the tuna, but no. But uh, uh, we're appreciative of that and it's sort of a, a, a very, very cool thing. I think uh, uh, everyone will benefit from it. And with that, Mike, I think that concludes my report. Uh, I'd just like to add, if you will, um, we have failed to announce that Items 5N November and 5JJ Juliet Juliet were pulled from the uh, today's agenda.
Okay, we'll make that motion when we get to the consent. She Got told it. me, so we'll take care of it. Okay, thank you. All right, we don't have any departmental reports, so we'll move to our council reports. We'll start with Mr. Tisdale. Um, yes, I'd spoken with Mr. Leonard again on the short-term rental and Department of Revenue just so they could get information out to operators or owners of short-term rentals, even if they did some sort of video that we could put on the website. I, I just think that uh, the short-term operators or owners, short-term rental operators, need to know what the financial decisions they are making once they decide to go into the short-term rental business. Because as we learned that day, there are still some unknowns at the state level, uh, but, but also it, it, it has a financial impact on the owners and the operators. The uh, second thing is on, on Irish Hill Drive on the East End Porter to the West End Veterans Boulevard, there, there's a sidewalk that runs east to west until you get to the last, roughly the last three blocks uh, from roughly Travia Street to Veterans <clears throat> Boulevard. And right in the middle there is the uh, finish line performance karting that's on Highway 90. And as I recall, that's a little go-kart stuff, upscale place. And as I recall, during the planning commission, they were to, uh, at some point, construct a sidewalk on the north end of their property, which would basically add, complete a third of that unfinished uh, sidewalk area on the south side of Irish Hill Road. But I'm thinking just as a future city project, if if uh, the, the, the go-kart track would do their part at some point, I don't know when they were required to do that, but that would be on the north end of their property yeah, there on Irish Hill. And then if the city somewhere in the future, and it may be next year or during the budget process, we budget a, as a project, uh, the completion of that sidewalk be roughly two blocks, just something to think about. The third thing is, is I, I kind of keep an eye and, and I've, spoken with Mr. Leonard about this. I keep an eye on the, the insurance, as, as we all know. The city is, uh, we, we self-insure. And just uh, in looking at the first four months right now, the, uh, we're, we're about 870,000 in the hole. And at this point last year, we were about 100,000 in the hole. And two years ago, we were about 400,000 in the hole, and that is claims exceed the revenue, the city's contribution and the employee's contributions. And I believe between 2018 and 19, we had increased what the, the uh, contribution is from the employees. But the only reason I mention that, and I, my guess would be that it's pretty much COVID related, but with the ups and downs uh, with employee health and everything, I know that we have the, I can't remember what you call it, the, the, the corridor, basically. Um, that whole code, sort of. Mr. Uh, Leonard provides us a graph, usually sometime in March, that says here's where we are. But you remember one year, we finished and I think we had to pull 800,000 or a million out of the general fund to cover that shortfall. And right now, we've never been in a hole this early uh, or this deep before. Again, it's COVID related, but I'm just keeping an eye on the budget and looking at the budget down the road and, and uh, maybe we can get Blue Cross Blue Shield to work with our uh, insurance administrators and, and if they can come out and visit these departments and educate all, all our employees, maybe they could do something virtual. It's just, uh, I worry about the coverage remaining what it is with the expenses that we have and you know who pays for it, whether it's us or the employees, uh, but it's just, I'm not sounding the panic button. I'm not alarmed at the moment, but I am a little concerned. Uh, and, and every employee of the city who takes advantage of the, the insurance and the wellness program need to know exactly what they can do to help us all keep the cost down because it's our insurance company. So anyway, that, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Ms. Newman? Right, Mr. Lawrence? No. Follow up with Paul talking about what we need, Paul. We just have an insurance committee meeting with Leonard. Say, so made the second week of March. You, Kenny, and myself will do that. 
you know, we'll address it then, see why we're out of here on a thousand, what happened. So that's how you handle that part. Right. The other part, the side show thing, who's supposed to be building this sidewalk? You keep saying somebody's supposed to, she's supposed to build a sidewalk? No, as, excuse me, no, as I recall, and, and Jerry may recall, I think I'm correct, that uh, go-kart track at the, uh, just east of McDonald oh, yeah, Avenue, where the old Slippery oh, Sam's yeah. used to be, on the north side of the property, there's no sidewalk. And as I recall, they were to build a sidewalk there. But then to the east of that and to the west of that, I believe the city w would have to construct that sidewalk. I think there's no sidewalk but there now. From McDonald's to the west, you know, you've got driveways that back onto the road. Right, and there's, the there's not a whole lot of no. concrete that would need to be yeah. poured for that portion, but I'm thinking between Travia and this go-kart thing, it's a short block. I, would I say just think it's a doable. feet, something like that. Yeah, it's a doable project, yeah. and it doesn't have to be done tomorrow, but I'm just thinking right. that would keep people out of the road, yeah. make it a little easier for disabled people who are going from point A to point B. Also, don't we have like allocations in our paving bond per ward? Maybe, Paul, maybe that's something you could allocate, you know, out of your paving we, we bond to get that little strip done. I, we've got some budget. I, I didn't. I didn't know that we had allocations per ward. I uh, thought we no. just. There are no allocations per ward. I'm, I'm learning something new at every right. council. If so, I want my. I want my allocation. I want my May That was fake news. I'll second that motion. Fake news. It's fake news. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm just mentioning it just because it, it's, it would be an easy fix. It just takes a little time and it's got to be planned for. That's all. Thank you. Well, that's a, to me, that's a question for Jerry Creel. Is that written in the resolution we passed that they have to build a sidewalk? Get your mic. I mean, that's up to you to make sure that's done. If that's supposed to be done according to the resolution. It's in the, it's in the land development ordinance. I specifically remember the sidewalk requirement for uh, the side of their property and the front of their property, but I'm gonna have to check on the rear to see if that was a requirement when it went through DRC. Now you need to get back with others. That's supposed to be done, they need to do it, you know? Uh, everything froze last Monday uh, in the city. Do we have any problems? We didn't. I think the courthouse had an FTC connection at uh, Bill, uh, Bill right here. Uh, anyway, I think that was the only major thing that I saw water flowing from was the back of the second judicial courthouse at the FDC. But I don't know whether we had a, a lot of problems or not. Or not. One small yeah. problem at the uh, Causeway Park. Causeway Park, okay. So we didn't have really any serious problems mm -hmm. anyway? No. Nope. The harvest was fine because all the pipes and everything sit underneath the, the piers and that too was fine. Did I run them? So no pipes would bust or anything on the harvest? Not aware of any. Not you aware of? I'm not aware of any. <laughs> All right. I said thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Deming. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first, with regard to uh, the insurance cost issues, I know in, in, when I look at the national um, bailout packages that are being moved forward by Congress, there's billions of dollars in there for municipalities. Is there any in there that we could that we could expect to receive to help offset these costs for COVID-related expenses? Let, let me say this. If we were 500,000 in population or more, we would d deal directly with the federal government on that. Right now, that sort of insurance is pushed down through the state. So uh, that we're kind of hamstrung on, on size. So uh, we had talked about that early on in, in the pandemic. So the, you know our, our population it does the federal kinds of programs are pointed to larger cities, but we'll press our case in, 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 from uh, every every option we have with regard to uh, uh, reimbursements and, and uh, help there. So this this would be a state level argument then. I think at this point, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Mike. Thank you for getting right on those sign issues that we talked about. I've already had some some compliments and some complaints uh, about them, which is typical. Um, let me know when you hear from Ms. Bell regarding the the uh, park replacement equipment. I know I saw the email and she's supposed we've, we've to be meeting. To, we've, I've already talked to her. She did, in fact, remove some of the broken playground equipment from the Margaret Sherry playground and uh, has is ordering, working with vendors to order replacement equipment 
Okay. I spoke with her too, and so I think she mentioned as well that she has she has vendors. money in the budget to be able to replace that furnace that uh, those um, broken and removed items. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Creel, if you would um, hang out afterwards, like I want to talk to you about how to handle some easements that residents have built fences blocking public access to. Okay. Right, that's all I have. All right, Mr. Glavin. Uh, the only thing I want to kind of get on the table today is the, um, and this is for parks and recreation, uh, is the summer playground program. Is, are, is there any discussion in looking at these numbers going down a little bit about reviving the summer playground program? We took that out of the budget for this year. It was uh, pretty goodly healthy. It was almost 50 as I'm recalling about 50 employees, part-time employees that we have to bring in summer hires. There's not any money in the budget to do it right now. And you heard um, that we're major in the hole on medical insurance. Baseball and softball, and those programs are going those to programs are going to, Yeah, but the, the kinds of things at this point. Okay. Swimming in, you know, a number of uh, uh, lifeguard positions. Yeah. I, I, I would suggest when we get to a mid-year mid -year review, which is uh, at the end of March, we take a look at where we're headed and see if council wants to put some money back in the budget for summer camp. Okay. So, I, I've go gotten ahead. three calls uh, this week, and that's why I'm just, uh, I, I told them that I'd find out if we're considering bringing it back, and I, and I did allude that we've made several adjustments, right. you know, to our budget because oh. of what, what's been transpiring. We, we didn't do summer camp last year for two reasons. One was money, and the, the second, one, second one was you know, COVID. Sure. So a lot will depend on where we are on both of those. Okay. Take that call at the end of March. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gines? I wanted to, I don't know whose um, ballpark this is. Um, I was informed about some of the school crossings or the school school areas. Uh, so I went and looked at the three local schools, uh, Nectivity, uh, Nichols, and Garnflow. Um, who's responsible for putting up flashing lights or if we can get some flashing lights there? Well, I, I assume we are. We are. We're, yeah. Where, where do you want to light? Okay. Um, um, it, well, the, the complaint came in about uh, Nectivity and, of course, uh, Gornflow. And um, down on Port Avenue, the traffic's pretty fast going down Port Avenue mm -hmm. and the backside of Howard Avenue. Once upon a time, there used to be some lights there. Uh, Division Street, the lights don't come, they don't turn on and off or for whatever reason. Nobody's cutting them on. And, um, and then I rode down by Gornflow and Gornflow, Lemieux Street area, and we don't have a stop sign there. I know they have caution school area, 15 miles per hour, but you know, sometimes people just zoom right on by. So I went down there to just kind of observe and they were zooming pretty fast. So the complaints coming from some of the parents who are worried about, you know, the last thing we want to, do is have a child tragically hit by somebody speeding. And of course, you know, we got some new roads, so people are itching to burn a little bit of rubber getting up to and from in the area. So if we can get some blinking lights to warn people that schools are in, um, and I'm mainly talking about Lemieux Street, I'm talking about turning the one zone on Division Street, because I went there uh, the last couple of days that we had school, and the lights, they, they, they do, they're not cutting them on. And then in front on um, um, Port Avenue and on Howard Avenue, I know there have been some concerns about that area also. So I just wanted to package them all in together. If I'm going to do one, you might as well get all of them taken care of. Well, we'll put a project together and put some numbers against it. Uh, right. At Division Street is um, which which school? Okay, that's Nichols. At Nichols, yeah. Nichols. Okay. Nichols Drive. Um, now the, they are the signs are up there, but, but the lights are, hadn't been on in since Katrina, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And if we can look at possibly getting those fixed up, 
Got some pretty roads, everything's looking good. It'll, be, it'll look great if we can get some lights for when the schools are in, to let people know that we have kids coming to and from. Um, next, I wanna um, ask the chief just to um, get with me later on about, I asked for, I guess, a study of probably putting up the um, stop signs in the, um, what is the Dewey Circle area? See if you what you come up with, then can we possibly get a couple of stop signs put up there? Um, Bradford Street was the other one. Uh, they asked for some speed bumps because I think we have a dis a child with some disabilities on Bradford Street. Um, uh, that's right beside the Hope Six area, and they were concerned that cars were going pretty fast there. Also. All right, next on the docket, uh, Walt. Um, I received a call earlier today about Hafali. If there's a time frame, we can get that corrected, that, that street. So I appreciate it if I can get a time frame of when they're gonna get kicked off on it. I think I get a call every week on that one. So just kind of go ahead and um, get that um, citizen taken care of. Um, and then I know on the South Side project, um, I want to know if Peyton Drive is on part of that um, infrastructure project. I know we have some issues on Pey Peyton Drive as far as some drainage. And so about the time that we're going to either get to that spot or um, maybe do a temporary correction for the, uh, the lady on Peyton Drive so that she can get some relief until they get to that spot. So, um, and I'll get with you on that, that a little later. And I guess meet with you later on also about the finishing up our fencing. Uh, okay, I think that should just about take care of the things I have. Just one or two items that can complete my report. Thank you. Mr. Demi, you have something else? I overlooked one word in my notes and it was lawn wood. Uh, you know, we did the paving projects on Rustwood in the Baywood area. There's a little, a tiny little connector road, um, lawn wood. There's no houses, no post, uh, no uh, mailboxes on it. It's just a little connection road. Uh, I don't know if it's 50. It's between, between Rustwood and? I'll send you, I'll, I'll give you the map afterwards so you can see it's, it's a very small area. Um, and I was wondering if we had any paving projects going on in the city, if whoever's doing a paving project could stop by and just knock out this little 70 foot, maybe uh, connection road. It's, it's in bad shape. I mean, it's, it's basically gravel. It's just old concrete. That's, it's, it's in really bad shape. But we had, we, whether we overlooked it, we put the project together or um, engineering, we, yeah. Missed it. Uh, we'll, we'll have the, you know, I guess, you know, both we got a, a concrete uh, sidewalk kind of uh, annual bid uh, vendor as well as. Well, know, this is this paving. is paving. This, paving was, this was we asphalt. Both of them in the contract, so we'll just see we, where we all budget wise and uh, and how many, you know, dollarize and see how many feet we got and where we'll, we'll go. Okay, yeah. Because we'll we I, I think we just, when we did this area on one project and we did this area on one project, we just overlooked that little connecting road. Yep. Um, we'll look at it after the meeting. Show me, show me on the map. I'll get it on the list. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Lawrence, you had something else? Yeah, to follow up with uh, uh, our colleague from Ward 2 was talking about nativity. We already did all that. Order, right Billy, Ray, uh, Billy Ray is looking for to put the, the pleasant out, kind of have two poles on Hot Avenue and on Porter. Put all the signage, put the screw sign, mark the street, everything been done other than the pleasant light. And Billy Ray was trying to see how he could put that. That's been in action already. So I don't know who told you that, who called you, because this is done several months ago. And they know that. All the signs were put up. The only thing wasn't put up with the flashing and lights, because they have to have two poles, one on each side of the street, with a way to put up new poles, or they could use the, the poles, the existing poles. All that was in action. And Billy Ray, you need to talk to him, uh, Mike Lennon, and find out where he's at with that. But he said he would handle it. So that's already in action, and been in action. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, the only thing I have is um, recently I've gotten a lot of calls about <clears throat> ditches that need to be dug out, and I know that our public works department's backed up, but um, we're coming up on grass cutting season, season, 
and that's going to cut into you know how much time we have for that and we're coming up on the real rainy time of the year as well soon so um yeah i, I have a list that i'm going to be sending in but if, if we can get on some of those to to prevent some of the flooding issues and streets being underwater and stuff before we get into that heavy grass cutting season um that would be a, a, director a, allen um, every monday morning at director's meeting he spills out a long list of how many feet of ditch have been cut and how many feet of grass, how many miles of grass have been cut and so forth. It's hard to believe, given the numbers he's telling us, that we haven't, that we still got more to do, but apparently so. Yeah. It, it, they've been cutting ditches. I mean, you, you've seen Mike and his crew out there. <clears throat> okay. Um, the other thing is, and we may have already received it, but I know that we have for this, this flyer, pretty much everyone has a location in their ward. If we can get this digitally to share on social media and stuff, um, that would be great. And we may already have it in, in our email and I overlooked it or something. And um, I believe that's all I have. I was, I was gonna ask what- uh, She's giving you the thumbs oh, up. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Um, as far as the reimbursement from the state on COVID-related deals, who determines where that money goes in Jackson? Is that the legislature, or, or is there a committee, or? Yeah. Who? FEMA and FEMA, I'm, I'm not sure how that allocation comes down. You know, we, we were awarded early on about a million based on population, uh, it just. Based on the cost that we reported. Was, no, it really wasn't based on, on that, just on mm -hmm. population, I think. Mm -hmm. But we did submit another one based on actual mm -hmm. cost. Mm -hmm. and, and is that, is that that's something that. FEMA. That one, that one six, I think we submitted that we have not um, got, you know, any confirmation that we were getting any of it uh, is, has been submitted. But the million just came out, not out of the blue, but based on. I guess early estimates, what mm -hmm. Mike was trying to say. Mm -hmm. Is that something that um, <clears throat> Keith Hurd could help us with? Yep. Okay. All right. That's all I have. And that will close our presentation agenda. We'll now move to our public agenda citizen comments. We'll have a total allotted time of 45 minutes. Each person will be allowed three minutes to speak. When you come forward, if you will, please sign in and state your name. Do I have anyone on the left side of the room who would like to speak? My left side, your right side. Anyone on my right side of the room, your left side, that would like to speak? Anyone in the back of the room that would like to speak? I'm Kay Miller, and I'm speaking as on behalf of a resident of Forest Avenue, and there's something coming on the agenda about a piece of property on there later in the agenda. There's, uh, I live on Forest Avenue, and um, I would uh, appreciate that uh, this piece of property has not been kept up. It, something needs to be done with it. It needs to be torn down. And uh, we're trying to make Forest Avenue better, and this prop piece of property is not helping us do that. So I would appreciate your consideration to tear that piece of that house down. Okay, this is on our um, code enforcements? It is. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone, in the rel anyone else in the room that would like to speak for citizens' comments? All right, if not, citizens' comments are now closed. We will move to our policy agenda. Lucy. Ordinance to amend the Biloxi Land Development Ordinance for standards and requirements for fences. I'll second. All right, that's a first reading. Next item, please. Ordinance to amend appropriate sections of the Land Development Ordinance to allow consideration of short-term rentals within the A Agricultural and LB Limited Business Districts. I'll move that. All right, first, Ms. Newman, second. That's Mr. Abide, um, with regard to A, yeah, I know that it's listed as a first reading on here, but we've already done the first reading on it. There's been no changes to it. It failed for a majority of the first time around, and I called it back up. Does it still have to suffer a first reading 
um, period. But we've done the first reading on it. It wasn't tabled. It wasn't tabled subject to call. It failed. Yeah, it failed for lack of yeah. a majority. So. Was it was it tabled subject? It wasn't tabled. It failed for a lack of majority. It ended in a three three. Okay. Thank you. Jerry, do you recall? Specific request from uh, Councilman Barrett that the council voted for us to conduct a public hearing specifically for no he's uh, you're, no we're on a he went back to a yeah. oh I'm sorry okay <laughs> that's okay yeah this is the, the fence it failed it failed for lack of a majority it was a 3-3 vote as I right remember. so yeah. does it because I called it back up does it have to suffer the first reading um, time period That's, well, I'll heed your advisement. Thank you. All right, and on B, I've, I made the motion and Ms. Newman second it. All right. Well, you got to all now. Now we'll move to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? Yeah. You move. We, need to, we need to first make a motion to, okay. Okay, you have, a, who did the second? George is first, who seconded it, Mr. Tisdale? Okay, now I need a motion and a second to remove 5N and 5JJ. All right. What you doing? Remove 5N and 5JJ from the consent agenda. At the request of you, All right, we have a first from Mr. Deming. Deming, and I'll second that. All right, all in favor as amended. Mr. Glavin. Um, I'm, I'm going to abstain at this time. Okay, so 6-0, Mr. Glavin abstaining. All right, we'll start with discussion. Mr. Tisdale. Not a thing. All right, Ms. Newman. Mr. Lawrence. <laughs> there you go. The mayor on C. Thing one and thing two. The number of the dropping, I think, is anything changed that we do it different with the COVID-19? Anything at all, times, hotels, motels, Take businesses, off. anything changed at all? Not, not, we're still in sync with the <clears> governor, <throat> I believe, in all cases. Is it not right? Council, yeah, no. There's no recommendation since things are slowing down. So when we have events, so watching, you know, as far as numbers and so forth, I think uh, we were about 300 in new cases, and I'm not, hospitalizations have been down, so they're trending down. But there's no uh, uh, suggestions from uh, our governor about what to do, and so we're just <clears throat> continuing. The reason I brought that up because you got a lot of things on here about the the billfish tournament, these fishing tournaments. How are we going to be able to handle that crowd wire with all these tournaments? It's great for the city. So can anybody Planning come or you got to be limited? Thing is, is being planned. I think the next uh, uh, boat show kind of attempt uh, is uh, the last two days in, in April and May 1st. And that will be the, <clears throat> the you know, uh, a, a, a pilot, if you will, on what, how we'll continue uh, the events that will roll out, to, you know, during the summertime. But the spreading of the crowd or the social distancing that is, is key to everything we're doing on the point and, and, and the harbors. One of the things that we're doing is people that have an outside event, we're asking how to bring not only set up but to spread the floor plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are four tournaments on your agenda today, just for FYI. April the 24th is the Cobia Shootout. May the 2nd to the 4th is the Cobia, Cobia Tournament. May the 31st to June the 6th is the King Mackerel, King Master Tournament. And June the 7th to the 13th is, is Billfish Tournament. So a lot, of, a lot of activity planned for the harbor. In addition to, I guess, the tuna, yeah, I guess we could call it the tuna, collection also would, would count. 
as a tournament sort of. Uh, but we'll ask them to, they'll, they'll set up like they did last year. They'll, they'll set the spread up, but we're, we'll ask them to give us a diagram ahead of time to show how they're going to do that. Well, the, the, the car show you're talking about, that's supposed to be in May also? The car show. That been finalized? They have that yet? They, they've been asked to have they, did you see their diagram yet? I know they've got, they've got a diagram that they've, 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 they've sent to us. Because all those tournaments and everything, they bring a lot of people down to the East Biloxi, you know? That's a good thing. Boat show, you're talking about? Car show. Car show. Okay. I hadn't seen the full plan on I've seen the full mm. plan on the uh, boat show that's coming up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Another one, E, on the, the lighting outside of Keesley Gate, is that going to be put in a roundabout? Which, uh, which item is that? That's E. E, okay. All right, so here's the long, sad story, uh, shortened version. Inside the gate, you, you, know, you remember that we have two contracts, outside the gate and inside the gate, both funded with different sources of money. The inside the gate work was funded with Department of Defense economic advantage, advancement um, money out of jacks, basically, um, basically money that the, the state, federal money the state uses for its military installations to make them BRAC proof if base, uh, to avoid base realignment closure. So when we built the inside the gate stretch of roadway, we built it, it was lighted, sidewalks and lighted. We were ready to turn the lights over to the, to the uh, Air Force, and the storm came along and wrecked all the lights. So we're going to go back, and we're going to we awarding a 39, you are helping, approving us, awarding a $39,000 and change contract to go back and replace all the broken lights so that we can turn the project over to the Air Force. Now that's, that, that we believe will be eligible for FEMA reimbursement. We're not sure, but we're going to apply. Bottom line, the lights need to be fixed. But we, have, we can't turn the uh, project over to the Air Force without the lights being fixed. So the best thing that happened, we do have FEMA deal and maybe paying some of the tab. Mm -hmm. yeah, That'd well, that, be a good thing. Be applied for, is what Mike yeah. was saying. Yeah. It has a project number and everything, so. <clears throat> on the K, on the PETA, on the final extension, on the tri-party agreement, okay. Yep. So what are we doing there? Just extending the time, or it's over with? Are they paid up? This is to extend the time, but he's asked for prior extensions, one because of the hurricane, and we're just saying your final extension mm -hmm. is this August, so we can get it on the tax rolls for next year. If he can't make that extension, he would lose the grant. All right. And this one here, uh, Fofo and L, Michael, and, uh, we're doing a conveyance of real property for the United States for the Kiesel Air Force. Is this is all on Division Street? Those are the six parcels that we bought and then in some cases demoed houses on Forest. on Forest Avenue where the uh, gate is being placed. The, 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 this is so. What are you doing? We're, with we're finally transferring that that land to the Air Force. It was part of the overall grant and the overall agreement with the Air Force. These are those six houses that are on Forest, on the west side of Forest, that will now become Keesler property as part of the front gate. So, as part of the overall project, uh, we have prior resolutions where we agreed to deed that to Keesler in the future. And now that the gate is, is almost ready, uh, we're just following up on that. And that will become uh, Keesler Federal property, where those six houses used to be. And how, what effect is this going to have on White Avenue? Are they going to shut White Avenue down completely? No. no. It, it, will be, it will be an open gate now. We don't know if it's going to be open 24-7 or whether it's just going to be open for rush hour but they're not going to close, the plan is not to close White Avenue. Because Keesler was always in the... But the main gate will, will no longer be, White Avenue will no longer be the main gate. The main gate will be the Forest Avenue gate. Yeah. It will shut gate <clears throat> one down closer to the bay. That will be shut. I mean, the problem with the White Avenue has always been the, the, the railroad tracks. 
Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So I don't know if they're going to shut it down completely or just use it for something else. Because, like you said, it's it'll probably be closed most of the time. Well, and in addition to that, the, the truck gate back on Bayview will shut down. Yeah, you know, and we're working on this tip, all this getting sorted on Division Street. What effect is that going to have on the interstate, the two, the ramp, the off ramp, the on ramp, on coming on the Hopkins? Right there, you know, how they come right Hopkins and Division Street? Mm -hmm. Are they going to do any of the adjustments? Well, yeah, they'll they be coming off, ramps? they'll be coming off the I-110 ramp, ramp onto ramp. a four-lane divided boulevard. I understand, but I mean, when they leave in case of the thousands of cars, they're not going to be able to get up the ramp. I'm with you. How are they going to handle that? You're going to back up all the way up to Vision Street? Uh, that's what I'm asking. The interstate going to be if, bigger. If you, there was some noise about mm -hmm. uh, making a, a four, you know, a, a double lane exit off of I-110. That's MDOT, and they're studying that. I don't know, you know, I, I don't feel that... Uh, it's it's critical or crucial that we do that right right now. We just you know get this thing open by the end of the year to coincide with uh, the things that the Air Force are doing. So we'll have a new main gate entrance by the end of the year. Uh, and if M dot you know there's plenty of room. We have a lot of right of way if that needed to be extended. So you know that's up to M dot. We we don't like CSX. We don't control M dot. Yeah, you know you having four lanes. What we're doing is great. But I mean you can't go down to one lane, and you got to. Two, three thousand cars come out there at one time. They're going to be back up all the way back to Division Street, all the way too far. I mean, you're going to have more than one turn. Well, the engineers have been studying the that, and, and you know, it, again, it wasn't critical. But the MDOT is, is aware of what we're doing, and uh, you know, the, 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 the state has provided a lot of funding. So uh, I don't think that's a roadblock at this point. But there is, there's enough room to, uh, if that becomes a, a real problem, uh, it's an MDOT kind of uh, ask. Also, also the, the design of the new gate, the, uh, the guard towers and the inspection facilities are going to be well inside the gate, well past four. So the typical backup that you see now on White Avenue, uh, it's thought that the majority of that is all going to be within the perimeter of Keesler because it's about three or four city blocks before you're going to get to the to that main to the inspection area. Yeah, I'm talking more about Peter coming out of when the leaving work. That's when you're going to have a problem going in. They got the big circle to take care of everything. They always said they wanted to defend on base. That's what they're doing with this roundabout and everything. It's perfect. I'm talking about everybody's leaving. You got that many cars still leaving, which is a lot, and you go to one lane. So I don't care if you got four lanes, two lanes, whatever you got, but they're all going down to one lane to make the turn. So that's something you need to address. Well, again, we MDOT anyway. is aware of it. They know we've been studying this for, for five years. And uh, you know what? Uh, we'll address that, but I, I don't see it right now as a showstopper. Our main goal is to get this thing open by the end of this year, and uh, you know uh, to coincide with what the Air Force is doing. I think it'll be a tremendous accomplishment. And if there it becomes a real problem, we'll address it. You'll still be leaving through White Avenue and and Pass Road. Those okay. gates, for exit purposes, are still going to be available. Now, That's right. I mean, yeah, there will be some additional traffic on Division. But right now there is, uh, that's not an access point at all. So it's going to disperse what's already going on now, I think. Right. Now, now that's just, it's just something, there's something you need to look at because they use an old gauge now. And you still have a problem with the traffic. That's all I'm trying to get that point across. And on uh, V, this uh, old key museum, you use in Port of the Tullis. How long is that agreement for? One year. Huh? Did you say how long? Yes. One year. Twenty years. One year. Oh, one year. That was is it that that's well, the, the total. We're amount. have all these other people develop on this property, mm -hmm. so we double dip it on both of these things or not? So they're just asking to use that property of the city to put on what they call a labyrinth, made of clay and oyster shells. It's kind of a display. Get ready for that. And um. It's going to be on the property adjacent to the or Oro Keith Museum, and they've, in order to do that, they needed a right of entry from us. Well, how does that affect when we have the events and everybody park all over there? They want me to park there? I don't understand the question. When we have all these events, like July with the fireworks, all these boat shows, they use that park a lot. They jack it full of cars, and I'll walk across the street. So they won't be able to use that to park on. 
it, it, they're not using the whole property, but it, it, are you, are you, you're saying maybe we should do something different because of the wooden boat show? No, no. The 4th of July is bigger than that. Yeah. We're talking about like the these city events. When everybody goes down there, yeah, they park on that a, empty lot. They this is not a, not a huge structure that they're doing. I can't believe that they'd use very much of the property. There'd still be, be plenty, plenty of room for people to park. And, and, and by the way, we'll pretty soon we're going to have ourselves a new Coon, Coon Street boat ramp and additional parking. And you had the boat so maybe they won't have to park across we're the street. We're not talking about that. The boat ramp is going to be boats and trailers and truck. Tr tr we're talking about the property on the side of it the It should tunnel. impact the, the, that parking situation. The way it's tucked in, it's, you know, it's not, nobody's going to be parking in that area anyhow. I mean, where the, the construction of this labyrinth is, will be. It shouldn't be an impact for 4th of July anyhow. I guess we'll have to see if that's right or wrong, too. It's the street. Yeah. On a double double A, Mike, is it the same? Were you doing the same rent and everything? That's a new 50 foot boat? excursion boat that's being brought in by the same people that run the Betsy Ann. And they're just asking for a, a lease agreement for a, a slip for this 50 foot party barge with a, pontoon boat, with a yeah. pontoon boat with a with a top on it that they're going to be doing excursions. They're going to have their, two boats down there. So they'll have two boats then, the Betsy Ann and this one. Yeah, we need a better name. We'll ask them to come up with a better name. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Deming. <laughs> Chief, I didn't write down the number. I just wanted to ask you, and I fully support the expense, but what is a bomb disruptor device? <laughs> I, I didn't write, I just remember reading through one of the, uh, one of the purchases for the police department was a bomb disruptor device. And I, I know it serves a purpose, I just wanna know what it is. Is it, a, is it a, used to disable bombs or is it a protective screen? No, it, it's used to disrupt the bomb and, and make it safe. Yeah. That's, yeah, I was just curious to know, like I said, yeah. anything that keeps you guys safe yeah. is good. I, I don't good. have a picture, but I can get you one. <laughs> Yeah, I just didn't know if it, if it, I've seen, you know, TV, bomb disruptor devices. I've seen little robots go in and take things apart. I've seen them put it, the bomb in boxes. You know, I've seen walls that they built. So I was just curious to know what, what our bomb disruptor device was. Just pure curiosity and information. Yeah, That's I, all. I'm not putting you on the, all right. on no, the spot. No, not, not at all. Not at all. I'll, I'll send you something on it. So Okay, thanks. That's all I have. And we do have a robot that does that too. Maybe Mr. Glavin? Yeah. I just want to note the uh, add-on that we had today, QQ, is, uh, and, and I want to commend the uh, Board of Supervisors and Supervisor Beverly Martin for jumping on a, a piece of road that was washed out and, and, and it was emergency uh, repairs for the safety of, of some of the drivers and, and people in that neighborhood, namely uh, Malpas Landing, uh, North Haven, and along uh, Brazier Road. and. Uh, you know, I reported it, and uh, I saw a crew prepping the area, getting ready to, to effect those repairs. So I, I just want to note that in today's um, proceedings. That's all I have. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Gines? I think that's it. Uh, I don't see any of them left. <laughs> Don't see anything on there? <laughs> Thank you. All right. I have a, a few things. Um, on M, this is just basically closing that project out. We submitted um, all of our receipts. They've given us our 250000 in reimbursements, and we're just closing that first $250,000 titling grant out, correct? That was just to close the grant. That was the first two fifty. dollars whereas the, the other two fifty is really a separate grant. Okay. Then O and P, these two go together. Is this correct? O and P are, uh, go okay. together, yes. Okay. Now, one um, is the uh, approval of the, the uh, cost, the put, moving the money to be able to uh, build the, the infrastructure, and the other one is the, uh, the design contract for the guy that's going to design the, uh, the work. 
Okay, now this is basically gonna run from wherever the water sewer stops on Shriners North almost to the city limits. Yeah, my notes tell me where a southeast window and door is located from so there. So my question, to... I, had, I had asked for us to look in to see, instead of running this up Shriners, what the cost difference would be to run it up Jim Bird Lane because we could pick up a lot more residents going up Jim Bird versus Shriners on this. Did we do that? We did not do, we, I, I'm not aware that we priced it going the other route. Okay, I'm gonna ask to, and I don't know if I need to do this now, or I wanna make a motion to table this until we do that, because we can pick up a lot more residents going that route, and it may not be doable because of the side of the road, the, you know, the easements that we have and things like that, but at least explore that, because there's a lot more residents that, and the proximity to the road, of those residents versus the ones on Shriners is a lot closer. And so we could service a lot more people going up Jim Bird versus Shriners and still accomplish our, you know, the ultimate goal. And so at least if we, if I'm gonna hey, ask- Table, that, table O, but not P then, because okay. we probably need the designer to help us with that answer. <laughs> and just at least explore it to see, you know, if the, if the money's in the same ballpark and in the process, we service a lot more people. So I'm gonna make a motion to, do I do that now or at the end? Okay, I'll I wanna make it. a motion to table O. I'll um, second it. Okay, uh, second by Mr. Tisdale. And ask for all in I favor just, now or is amended later. Okay, all in favor? All right, seven zero. Yes, subject to call. All right, and then um, that covers P. And then on, you're gonna leave P? Yes. And, um, on okay. on why can you ex I I read through there and didn't really understand what what are exactly are we doing? It says it's going to add forty five days to the project. Is this something that's already been done and we're just doing that now, or um, just putting the resolution on, or is this something that's uh, is on why on why the, the majority of that cost is the seventeen thousand dollars or so where they're having to adjust the, the flow of the drainage so that it, it, it's not gonna interact with uh, an existing water pipe that's there. Okay, but that's not gonna affect the opening of Wool Market Road by 45 days, correct? Uh, no. Okay, all right, and then uh, the only other question I had was on um, CC. We're getting the two new fire trucks. Where are those fire, are those fire trucks already here or is um, that something that's coming and where are they gonna be at? They're already here, one's at station one and one is at station seven? Five, five, that's right, yeah. one at five. They, right. They've been on the road for a couple of months now almost. Okay, that's all I have. Um, so I'll call for the question. Um, all in favor of the consent agenda as amended? As amended. Seven zero, any exceptions? Okay, C. He's abstaining from C. Mr. Deming, it's staining from C. All right. We'll now move to our code enforcements. Mr. Krill. The first item on the agenda, item A. Bobby Danny Chancy, 4269 Oak Ridge Place. This property is still in violation. All right. All right. Is there anyone here to speak on behalf or against Mr. He's Bobby here. Chancy? Uh, 4269 Oak Ridge Place. Uh, first, um, if anyone wants to speak on behalf of um, Mr. Chancy, if you will, please come forward and sign in at the table and state your name, please.
Uh, the property's been turned up, turned over, and turned up. And I got 20 people come from the drug center tearing it up. And uh, we're, Sir, we're, would you, we're, we're working on it, cleaning it please, up. Would you please state your name? Uh, my name is Bobby Tancy. Okay, all right. And uh, last night we got the backhoe running, to talk about $7,000, get it running, get it out of there. We got the Nova out of there and a few more things, and we're, we got probably 400 tires gone, and we got about another 100. Uh, we, it's, been a, uh, it's been a mess. It's a mess, but I'm gonna clean it completely up because I'm tired of people just coming in there and beating me up and robbing me and me not being able to see who's coming. So I'm gonna clean it up and camera it up and everything and I'm gonna build a brand new house there. But uh, um, first thing is clean it completely up. And uh, that's what we're doing. I got men working. Last time y'all come in, y'all told me a few months ago to clean the front up and build, do the fence. So I cleaned the front up and did a fence and everything was bad. You know, Bobby Arturis lost his place and everything went bad again, I got picked on. Uh, Y'all come through the back of my property, no trespassing, looking at that old house and seeing how bad it's back. I'm, I'm on my knees, I'm, I'm bad, I mean, it's bad shape, but I won't clean it all up. I don't wanna live like this no more. We, I went through a divorce and uh, not, not a divorce, but I mean, me and my woman ain't together no more, and uh, I bit the bullet, bit the dirt, and got myself stomped on, and I got 20 people following me everywhere I go. I got, you know, movies of it. <laughs> and uh, I'm tired of this kind of life. I want to be a human again. And uh, main thing is clean that property up. I mean, everything's getting gone. The welder's gone. Uh, all that's getting gone. That trailer's getting gone. All my tires going in the trailer, man, I'm paying a man to, Dispose of them all of them. I got 75 more to go. I had 500. Uh, that's what's left of the 500. And, you know. Uh, all right. And uh, the, most of the little trailers are all gone. That one big trailer, we're just saving it for to get the rest of the tires up. All that with motor parts and stuff, all them parts are gone. The big parts, most of the heavy stuff is gone on the big motor stuff and everything. That, that, that thing there's, uh, Camper's full of bargain barn stuff when I was in business at Bargain Barn, and every, the other camper was full of another uh, flea market I had here in Bluxy. And uh, that that camper's empty, but uh, I was going you know, but you know, I'm, I'm getting down to the brass nuts on cleaning it up. I mean, you know, I'm doing all I can. Like, last night we worked all night long to about four this morning, getting the Nova out of there, getting the backhoe. Backhoe just, we'd get, it, we got it running and we, the front end wouldn't work, the back end wouldn't work, and I, but we just about rebuilt the whole thing. I'm about, about to put it back to work, you know, but uh, just a few more, you know. I right. really need, well, I really need about six months, and I, I would never, it would be clean as a pen. I mean, okay. property, I'm not going to sell a property. It's not for sale unless I do sell it, somebody offers me some money, but I'm not going to be beat out of it. I mean, I've been beat down for four years. I kept asking people around town, my friends, when are you thinking to stop? Well, they'll leave you alone. Well, they beat me all night long where I can't do that in a day. Well, I've had enough of this life. I'm ready to be a human again. I really am. Okay. All right. We're going to give other people an opportunity to speak. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on behalf of Mr. Chansey? Okay. All right. If there's anyone that would like to speak in regard to this property. You can come, you can come forward if you will. Please sign your name at the table and please state your name as well. Okay. Okay, my name is David Fayard. I live down the road from this address. It's a dead end road, so I see what comes and goes. As far as that backhoe, it was hauled out there yesterday afternoon. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking, you had sir, your chance. Sir, you'll have a chance to speak when he's finished, Mr. Chancey. But anyway, the place has been an eyesore for, uh, Lord, I don't know how long, since Katrina. You know, he talks a big game, but 
The only way that property is going to be cleaned up is the city gets a contractor going in and cleans it up. Yeah, I remember you and I discussing this when I came by your house. Yeah. Well, that's that tells you that's been going on way before then. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Chancy, but you don't you don't live up to your talk. You talk a big game, but it's not going to get cleaned up. And if he hauls everything off tomorrow or two months, it's going to look just like it does right now. And I don't know where the dogs went. Used to have some pins. I don't see any pictures of. But there's been. You can ask the police chief. You can. I don't know how many times the dog catchers has been out there in the past 10, 15 years with dogs, stray dogs he's got. But the only way it's going to get cleaned up is if the city goes there and does it. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Fayard. Anyone else like to speak regarding uh, Mr. Chancy's property at 4269 Oak Ridge Place? All right, Mr. Chancy, you have an opportunity to, um, to speak in regard to Mr. Fayard's response. As far as the backhoe not running and then uh, trailers out there, it was trailers out there, but we had to drive it up on the trailer because it ain't a little backhoe, it's a big backhoe, and it don't move unless you're running. <laughs> you can't lift the bucket, you can't lift the back, and yeah, so we did drive it over. If y'all want me, you know, bring anybody to tell you who did it for me, I can bring the contractor that did it for me. Uh, as far as my property, it is, it's not as bad as it's been. We've hauled so much out of there, so much, so much, so much. But Ms. Fayard is wrong, because I'm cleaning it, I'm gonna clean it, and I'm not gonna be a hoarder no more. I'm done with it. I mean, I, I just had too much junk. I had business after business after business in Bucks, Mississippi, and uh, it, that was a storage place for us. And when, when I, we got se separated, I ended up with it. I ended up with all the junk. <laughs> And now it's getting gone. I couldn't even walk nowhere. I mean, you know, and, uh, and uh, I don't like it. We always lived in town and we didn't live out there. We lived in town and that was, uh, our place in town was always nice. You know, we didn't have, never have it, but that was a business storage place basically. You know. All right, I appreciate it. Mr. Krill, when were these pictures taken? Okay, and if we close this case today, there's approximately 30 days prior to any action being taken, and if he has his property clean within those 30 days, um, nothing will happen, but if he doesn't take care of it, then? Then we'll bid, take bids for contractors and have them go out and clean it up. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to close this case, which gives the city the right to come onto your property and clean your property. It takes approximately 30 days for that process to happen. So if you have it cleaned in 30 days and everything's taken care of, then, uh, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me finish. If it's done in, in approximately 30 days, the city comes out there, nothing will be done. However, we have the right with it, us closing this to come onto your property any time within the next. As soon as, soon as we receive the bids in, then we can release it. But if the council wants us to. No, I'm, I'm asking, so once we close this though, uh -huh. even if he cleans it up, with us closing this case, we still have the right over a certain amount of time if oh. this, if this per problem persists. Any Anytime the council passes a resolution for us to clean up a piece of property, we can go back in there however many times are necessary for the next two years okay. by simply placing a sign on the property and waiting two weeks. So Mr. Chancy, we're gonna close this case today. The city will start the process of getting a contractor to come out and clean it up. That'll take approximately 30 days before that starts, approximately. That's not a, a set in stone date. If, when that, if before that happens, your property's clean, they won't do anything. But over the next two years, it gives the city the right, if this problem comes back up again, to not go through this process, we can just hire a contractor and come onto your property. Mm -hmm. 
So Mr. Craig. we're going to move to the next case. This case is closed. Item B on the agenda, Division Street Church of Christ, care of Anthony Marshall. This property is still in violation, 825 Division Street. All right, is there anyone here to speak on behalf or against Division Street Church of Christ and care of Anthony Marshall at 825 Division Street? Yeah, uh, Mr. Marshall called me yesterday. Um, he called me yesterday and I told him that I would give him 30 days to go ahead and get him off there. Um, he have him right there. He has some property out in the county and he's gonna start, he actually started moving them yesterday. Okay. So. All right, I'll second that. All in favor? 7-0 for a 30-day extension on item B. Next item. Item C, throw them in Sarah Lou, 367 Forest Avenue. This property is still in violation. All right, is there anyone here to speak on behalf or against uh, Sarah Lou at 367 Forest Avenue? All right, please come forward. If you will, sign in and state your name. Can I sit right here? No, right there in front of that microphone, right there, please. And give us your name before you start speaking, please. Hello, Councilman. Hello. Hello, my name is Sarah Lou. Um, I bought the properties at 367 Forest Avenue in Biloxi back in 2015. And um, when I bought the properties, as I understand, the house has a two structure, the front building and then the back building as an apartment with the pool. Um, I believe this house used to be owned by the Mafia Dixie. I have uh, no idea. I didn't know that until after I bought it. And um, since I bought the properties, I didn't do any um, uh, change in any structure of the house at all. And I already have the full list of the uh, violation. And I have uh, no clue. I checked, you know, with the city record, the previous owner didn't have it, but maybe change up the ownership, you know, create the list of violation, I have no idea. But ac but actually, you know, I ch because I don't live here, I live in California, I have to fly back and forth, and this, whatever the city demand, and I try to accommodate and accomplish that, you know, in um, the matter of time. Like I just flew in, you know, um, yesterday, and I did hire, you know, the licensed um, electrician uh, contractor come to the house like uh, last December, uh, last year, December, I believe 15, uh, 2020. I have a meeting with um, uh, Cherry Creole, you know, as the boss of the department, and with my um, uh, manager, his name is Jack Mazur. And as we understood, and I have, you know, his uh, letter, you know, to uh, print out, you know, the content of the meeting. And um, at that time, you know, um, the back of the building can be um, restored, you know, as a storage, and then, you know, uh, all the garage, but no, as long as, you know, no uh, leaving uh, a space over there. And I agree with that. And then, you know, the fund building, you know, uh, we have a two, a uh, certification of completion by uh, uh, Cherry Creole side of off, one in 2018 and one, you know, in last year, March uh, for 2020. And uh, we did that commission, but however, you know, when the uh, tenants, you know, moving out 
and um, uh, the House vacancy, in, I believe, you know, uh, back in, uh, in July. It's like a vacant, you know, for quite a while of time. And it's hit by the hurricane uh, and damaged, you know, by the weather. And um, I, I'm not here, you know, to maintain up the house. And I got very frustrated, you know, with this property. It's like it's hunting me, you know, for years since we bought that. But um, uh, Mr., you know, um, Jerry Creel and, um, you know, he ordered now, you know, um, I have to demolish the back building. And um, um, I know it's cost a lot of money. And um, like I said, you know, during the COVID-19 um, and the hurricane and I'm really, you know, devastating with the financial crisis. Um, I don't get paid by the tenants for months, still living at my properties. And then the house damages, unfortunately, you know, I don't get covered by the insurance at all. And um, I'm really crying, you know, for the situation. But I would agree with him, you know, to demolish the building, to make the city, to make Jerry happy. I'm willing to do that. And um, I prefer, you know, if let Jerry, you know, have the city demolish that. And then he can tax uh, for next year bill, like about $4,000. I'm okay with that because I don't have a budget right now to do anything. And in the fund building, um, last December, and he did give me the authorization, you know, had the electrician come in and check up the house, it's, everything is good. So let him know so he can send, you know, his inspector come and check that and I can get the power on for the fund building. And I appreciate Cherry, you know, give me that opportunity. And then the city will take care of the demolished, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I, I'm sorry, you know, if I didn't mean to cause the meeting today. I'm like a citizen, I pay my property tax. I just want to be normal like the rest of the other people. <clears throat> I feel really sad to be a peer here to talk in front of you. I thought I get the settlement in peace and quiet. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here and speak with my voice. I just let everybody know I want to comply with the city to resolve, you know, in the um, peaceful way and cost less. Okay. All right, and thank you. Thank you and for your support and help. Okay, all right, thank you. We're gonna give the other people a chance to speak and if you uh, need a rebuttal, we'll, we'll allow that as well. Nathan, thank you, can sir. I ask Jerry a question? Yes, go ahead. Jerry. <clears throat> Yes, sir. The process we've gone through now to deal with this house, this house just going to be demolished? It's the, apart, the old apartment building in the rear, the two-story apartment building is what's on there today. The, um, this is a L-shaped piece of property and it faces Forest Avenue and goes back. Now, over the years, we've had to have several sheds tore down on this property since Ms. Lou bought it and also had to have a swimming pool filled in. Um, because she just wouldn't do anything with it. The, what used to be the apartment building in the, in the back, and there's a picture of it, um, lost its grandfather status years ago. I don't think it's been occupied since I've been here, and that's been 18 years. But it's uh, just a haven for problems, uh, people going in and out. Uh, it's full of what appears to be black mold. Uh, the floor's rot, and it's heat up with termite damage. And uh, the, uh, the, the way Ms. Lou operates is that she will allow people to move into the house knowing that it's not ready to be occupied. And there'll be some agreement that they'll go in and pay for their rent by doing repairs to it. 
well then we'll get a complaint from the neighbor that people are living in there without water, sewer, electricity or something. We'll go out to investigate and those people will move out. And, um, and I've had meeting after meeting with Miss Lou about a number of properties. She, she owns several rental properties here in town. And um, she listens to what I say, but she never follows through with what she promises. Now, we'll have to say that the house that's on the front of the property um, did get to a point after several trips to court, did finally get to a point to where uh, she was able to get a CO on it. Uh, and then the storm came and hit and a tree fell and hit the front of it and it knocked the facade, the uh, carnage off the front and messed up the, the power panel that was there. But the, the case here today is just for the big two-story building in the rear that used to be um, an apartment complex. One of the last gentlemen that lived in here, and there have been several that have lived on this property since she bought it in 2015, asked if he could uh, kind of rework that building in the back to allow him to be able to store some cars that he owned in it. And so he went in, he removed some walls, and you can see now that above the, you can see where it's sagging now uh, above the roof line. So this this building is in really bad shape and, and needs to come down. Oh, my, my question to you, what steps we need to take as a city council to have this building demolished? So I, can I ask you okay, real quick? When, when you're talking about the back, the, the back building that's in really bad shape. This whole place is in bad shape. I think that there's a disaster. Well, the, as far as anybody living there, Jerry, how can you let anybody live in there? Anybody well, we, can live in there? Well, we don't. That's what we go out for. When we get a call from the neighbors that somebody's yeah. living in there, if there's not minimal services in there, we go out and placard the building. That's what we do, put a placard on it that says that this building needs to be vacated. It's not fit for human habitation. You know, this, is, this goes back to the Oklahoma thing, the same thing. It's time to stop all this stuff. And if people are not doing right, you need to get rid of it. The house needs to be demolished. If you had to do the, the back one first and the, the one in the front second, I don't care how you do it. Mm. These houses, you cannot fix them up. Mm. <laughs> you, you, nobody has enough money to fix them houses up, the rent. Yeah. Not, there's no value. Yeah. The and city needs to step up for the neighbors yeah. and everybody else that lives around there and have the house demolished, period. Well, that's, and that's what we're doing. We're bringing it to the city council to get that resolution to go out and take it down. Ms. Lou has already been fined several thousand dollars on this property through the court system. We tried to handle it through the court system. And right now she's got a pending $30,000 fine on this piece of property that she's filed an, an I, appeal on. I have a question. So if I understood her correctly, she said she was okay with us closing this case and demolishing this this portion that's up for um, in in front of us today is that correct? That's correct. That's what I heard. So so that would take care of what's in front of us today. We can't do anything about something that's not on our agenda. That, that's right. But but she said she's okay with that. That's correct. correct. That's what I heard. Yes. Okay. So I have to give these other people a chance to speak for you. So she said she's okay with what's in front of us. We'll have to deal with the other later. But what's in front of us, she said she's okay with going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, please come forward and, and you can. Could you please pull your mask down so we can hear you a little clearer, please? Thank you. Um, can I take it down? I yes, and please speak into the microphone. Um, I would like to stand and so I can speak better if you allow me to, um, Councilman. Um, uh, gentlemen, um, i like, you know, to continue uh, under the oak. You know, I tell the true and the only true. Um, I live in California. I never allow any of my tenants do illegal activity. I send, you know, the lease to uh, Team C. Poli and also, you know, Cherry Creo. The tenants say, you know, they rent it as a family use only. I didn't know, you know, later on, you know, they run it like from the church. I have a no clue. And then I just rent it for them for one month. And after they stay for one month, and then Team Cipola call me and say, they evict those tenants immediately because, you know, they have a people, uh, 
uh, do um, living in the back of building and pull a power cord. A minute, you know, they told me like that. I fly from, I flew from California to over here. I have victim immediately, and I get the eviction paper and I send it to Tim and then to Jerry Creole. And um, you know, I do whatever to comply with the city. But however, you know, um, they find me like a 30,000 and I already pay 5,000. I pay the lawyer fee 10,000, but they still hunt after me. I don't know what I want to do. I try to sell the house, but it's not so yet. I'm really depressed over this property. I make zero, but I got five after five. Take me to the court for five years. I don't know what to do now. I'm really stressed. So I asked for help. Lou, I, ask you, I agreed to demolish the back of building. Oh, I just want to have a peace. Okay, Miss Lou, so so if I understand you correct. And he told me, you know, I allow people to need an illegal sub. That's not true. I never allowed that. They did it behind my back. I live in California. I don't know. And they told me a victim, I came over, I flew over here, I made them in, a victim immediately. They just stay in the house only for one month or two months, that's it. Okay, Miss Lou, am I understanding you correct when you say the piece of property on the back that is before us today, that you're okay with us closing this case and giving the city the, the go ahead to tear this property down? Yes, I okay. agree to do that. Okay, and, and that handles what's for $4, in front of $4,000, you know, and they tax, you know, extra $4,000 on my property for the next year tax. It's okay, because right now I couldn't do anything. Okay, that's, that's what's before us today, and that's all that we can do anything about today. So now I'm going to give these other people an opportunity to, to say what they would like to say. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Let me ask you a question. Okay, George, Ms. Lou, Ms. Um, George wants to ask you a real quick question. Yes. Do you still live in California? Yes. All right, the poor people living around that house live here. We live in the city of Biloxi. We have to put up that every day. That's the tough part. I know you got all the emotion. Where do you, how do you think they feel every day when they go home? Have to pass that. So yeah, we live in the city of Biloxi. Yeah, but we live in the city of Biloxi, and it's in the neighborhood, and it's destroying the looks of the neighborhood. Everything about the house is terrible. How Jerry only has one of these houses on this thing today, I don't understand. These, both of these, this thing should be cleared to the ground. There should be nothing left on this piece of property, period. Trust. Jerry Creel needs, not just like if Jerry Creel needs to do that, then bring it to us next week. Okay. If we ain't dang, nothing going, no, wait a minute. It's not on the agenda. We'll discuss it next week if, if, it, if it's the on right the agenda. The I have the right to protect Well, you're, you're not asking her a question. Yeah. You're attacking her. I'm not worried about this. She don't live here. We fight this every day. Okay, let's right. deal with what's on the agenda. In the second house, I'm just saying, Jerry needs to get on that, put it back on the agenda, the other one, and get them both tore down. Okay. Period. All right. Thank you, Miss Lee. I, I did tell the police, if you see anybody uh, occupy my house, supposed to be vacant, just arrest them, because I don't live here. I cannot babysit my house 24 hours. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank okay. you. Okay, the other gentleman that wanted to speak, or, or ma'am, if you will, please sign in and state your name. And I hope I don't repeat anything that's already been said, hopefully. But um, first of all, there's six facts here. The first one, it's always unmaintained. The second, the city, you, you can't you, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Would you please state your name? Oh, Becky Desport, I'm sorry. Thank you. There's six facts dealing with this property. The first one is it's always unmaintained. Two, the city doesn't seem to have a hold on enforcing the homeowner's maintenance of the property. Three, everyone is subjected to the eyesore and the garbage associated with it. Number four, it affects property values for those around them. Number five, it's open to weather, rodents, garbage, crime, vagrants, children playing, fire hazards, squatters, and drugs. It's literally a safety hazard in its present condition, and we've seen that. Um, some people feel that just addressing the issue time after time and not acting on it reflects the city's apathy for a neighborhood who only wants a safe, desirable, beautiful, and fiscally sound place to live. There are five reasons to demolish a place. The first one is the weak foundation. It's pretty obvious here, that applies. Uh, it's very old, irre irreparable, that applies. The change in zoning laws, now that may not necessarily apply here, 
but four, it contains dangerous materials. That applies paint, lead, nails, falling structures. It could be asbestos, mold, termites. A vacant lot, the fifth one, is more marketable than what is sitting there now. That applies. You could actually, this is me, you could actually put a community garden there. It'd be better than what's sitting there now. So that's four out of five that apply. Uh, and we certainly won't forget the incident recently of the young man found in it after two hours of looking. And we found him, you know, right before sunset. It's not a place I would want my child hiding or playing in. It's just not safe. He probably could have been found sooner, maybe, if not for this unsafe hiding place. One last fact, lately the crime is rampant in this neighborhood, the break-ins, theft of cars, even guns are being stolen out of our cars, for crying out loud. This building would be a perfect refuge for those that feel the need to sneak around in the dead of the night and steal what doesn't belong to them. So we would ask the city to reinforce, to enforce the de demolition. That's what we want. The neighborhood has already done the work. We've informed you. We've complained repeatedly. We have called and written city councilmen. We have spread the word. We've asked for relief. And last but not least, we're here today. So I'd like to let's work together in a quick and timely manner to resolve the problem. And I will end saying that I own two properties in Ocean Springs that I ran out. And I put it in my um, rental lease that I don't care if the faucet doesn't work. You call me within 24 hours. I want to fix it. And if I had a place that looked like this, I guarantee you, I, I wouldn't do it. I would never allow my house to look like this. Not even within 24 hours, the problem would be fixed. This has been going on and on and on. And that's all I got to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Desport, sir. I'm so damn mad right now, I can't even talk. Um, I am one of the property owners that is adjoined. There's five or six houses that surround this L-shaped property. You, could you please state your name for the Yes, person? Martin Miller, sorry. Um, this property has a very long history, and not a very good one. Um, from murder up, you name it, has happened on this property, not under Miss Lou by any means, but nobody's been able to keep the house. Prior owners bankrupt. Everybody, it's come in and has not been able to stay. Um, I've been in the construction business for over 30 years, and um, I've tried to even sell this property to just get something going on. And Miss Lou does not vet her tenants. Miss Lou spends more time here than she does in California because my fence is right next door. I hear the sales pitches going on. Then I hear the tenants, oh, she promised me that, you know, if we fix this, she pays back. She didn't. We gave her money. We own it, blah, 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 blah. They're gone. This has not happened just a few times. There is nothing about what Jerry Creel has said that's a lie today. The house is infested with rot and termite damage. The ceiling is down in the back room. The roof's leak on it. I hope that going forward, if this comes up next week, that the house is removed. I am sorry that Miss Lou may lose her investment, but I'm also aware that she has the funds and the means to do what she wants. She can write this off, sell the property, do something that's going to work for this neighborhood. Mr. Lawrence, thank you. I saw you drive by today and take the time and look at it. He is not joking. Since the storm, Miss Lou has got somebody out to pull the trees out front, and that happened relatively. But neighbors have were, had to work constantly over the last six years, cleaning sidewalks, cleaning driveways, picking up trash. There is stuff laying all over the property. There, at one point, just to kind of give you the rundown, I can remember the first tenant, his mama lived in a van in the backyard. I had to call Jerry Creel. Nobody should put their mother in a van in the backyard. Then the next crew that I remember was a nice family. They couldn't handle the bills. They left. And then we got a halfway house. There were over 25 men, women, and children living in this house. If you vet your tenants, you know what's moving in. And Jerry Cree will tell you this was not a legal situation, period. Then the next gentleman claimed he was with the mafia, made threats to the neighborhood. I've talked to Jerry about it when we owned about his 
stance and what he was going to do there. Um, brought motor homes in, boats in, worked on them back there. And, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I am, it's been a long year, and I'm pretty tired. The storm was the kind of the last call. That house is sitting there with a the front end tore off, power mast tore down. Nothing, I mean nothing other than the fact that the trees got drug out front has been done whatsoever. Nothing. And I know that we're in agreement, the back building's going to come down, but I ask this council, we are at a state in which the city is seeing incredible property values increases. I've worked hard over there. Anybody knows me six years to, to, to turn Forest Avenue around to put single families in there. And unfortunately, that little run through there's got a terrible infestation of termites. There's another property owner here that lives next door that could testify you that, that we're all dealing with it. And this house, with the lack of neglect, it's just a matter of time before somebody gets hurt or something goes wrong. And we are on record today. So if somebody gets hurt because we didn't move right in the right direction, that kind of puts some liability on us. Is this how we want our city to look? Is this how we want our neighborhoods to look? We can move forward. We're doing great things. Let's bring our neighborhoods up and let's stand behind the citizens. I'm sorry I don't have more people here, but every house, two doors, any direction of that home has either sold or left because they're tired of it. Thank you so very much for your time. All right, is there anyone else that would like to speak? All right, if not, what we're going to do is we'll close this case and um, we'll go forward with the city getting a contract in place to tear the back portion down and whatever we need to do to correct on the front. Jerry, if we can have our people. Mr. Tisdale, go ahead. Yeah, I just have a question because we're just dealing with the structure in the back today. Uh, I don't know, Peter? Or Jerry, you may be able to answer this. Can uh, can we charge Mr. Creel with, I guess, examining the uh, uh, what's what's the word? I'm one to determine to determine. Yeah, if, if if the front if that front structure is structurally sound or whether it constitutes a hazard. Uh, I believe we could do that. Could we not? Well, you can do that, yes. We can look at the front. Okay. Yeah. Uh, after you yeah, so whatever action needs to be taken to determine to determine that, if y'all would do that, and then you know, I guess it would come back. Yeah, I'll make a second to that. And okay, yeah, I, I will make that motion that we charge uh, code enforcement with determining yeah. whether uh, that front building or front residence is uh, structure is structurally sound and whether or not it needs to be demolished. Okay. All right, I have a first and a second. All in favor? Okay, 7-0. All right, this case is closed. We'll now move to the next case. I'm sorry. The last item on the agenda today, Martin L. Bowman III, 1621 Vine Street, and this property is still in violation. All right. Do I have anyone here to speak on behalf or against Mr. Bowman on 1621 Vine Street? And nothing has been changed since the last time, is that correct? Some things have been moved around, but essentially it's the Still same way it was two weeks right. ago. This case is closed. That's all the items on the code enforcement hearings. We'll now move to the routine agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a first by Mr. Lawrence, second by Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Lawrence, you have any discussion? Uh, yes, uh, the mayor's gone, Mike's gone, Walt gone. With it. About P.D. by you know anything, P.D.? Here we go. Mayor's back. Yeah, the, come on, Mayor. You come out now. The war's <laughs> over with. Come on out. Uh, they're all walking back the in now. Out. The war's out. Come on. <laughs> Mayor's gone. Police gone. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence is wanting to know if we have any money. Yeah, but anybody did anything money-wise, whatever? Two point nine in. After this deal, I think there'll still be three point six left for uh, look ahead. So you have three point six. You have another two point nine. I think we got two point nine in either last week or, or this week. Okay. So that. What well, was it here? I don't know. Where it is. All right. 
All right. All right. Any yeah, other it's discussion? Good news. Bank. I said it's always good news. You have something coming. You're getting yeah, paid. Let's, let's just keep right. up. Try to good. look ahead on everything that, uh, that's good. coming. That's good. That's good. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? If not, I call for the question. All in favor? 7-0. Do I have a motion to Move. adjourn? First by Mr. Lawrence. Second Backing. by Mr. Tisdale. All in favor? Don't, don't forget about your tuna. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some rest